talking today about the reason for protecting our children. The reason for protecting our children. When we talk about that word reason, reason has to do with a cause. What caused a child to come into this world? When we talk about reason, we are talking about an explanation why a child has come into this world. When we talk about reason, we're talking about the justification. What is it that justifies a child being born in this world? What is the action? What, what, what caused a child to be born? What are the reasons? Every child that is born is born for a specific reason. Some of you know of uh, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey was not conceived in the normal societal way. There was no action in terms of proper planning for even her being born. When you hear her tell the story, some will say it was an accident, but there are no accidents when it comes to children being born. And today, that child who was conceived casually has become a renowned fixture not just here in America, but around the world. Children are born for a reason. When you look in the Bible, you'll see that children were born for a reason. When you look in society, children were born for a reason. When you see the cultural contribution children make, you will know that children are not just here to be here, but children are here for a reason. When you look at the contribution of children to science, to education, to the medical world, when you look at children's contribution to music, to art, all of these areas, you will notice that children have a reason. I pose the question, what is it or what, it, what, what, why is the care for children so very, very important? Why, why do we, why do we need to have the discussion on the care for children? And when I pose that question, a lady by the name of Susan Brown, Susan Brown is president for Kids Co. Uh, that's an organization that works for the welfare of children. When we ask why is giving care to children that important? These were her answers. One, when we care for children, it helps to support parents who are working. When there is a system, when there is a means by which we care for children, as we have been saying, it takes a village to train a child. When you go to work and you know your child is being cared for, it helps you to work better. Not only that, but 
when there is care for children, it helps them in their early childhood development. As we said earlier, when children are cared for in their early lives, it translates into what will happen to them and for them in the future. When you care for our children, they are prepared to go to school. Some of you are probably teachers on this call and you know that when children have not been properly cared for, they come to school ill-prepared, cannot count, cannot speak properly. And sometimes their friends then what? Laugh at them. And when such things have happened, they, 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 they go into themselves, they go into their little shelter and we never understand why they never blossom like they're supposed to because somewhere in their upbringing, somebody did not give them the kind of love, the kind of compassion, the kind of courtesy that is deserving of a human being. When we care for our children, we prepare them for school readiness. Yes, caring for our children, she said, provides equal opportunity for our children. Equal opportunity. You do know for the most part that children play together, they work together, they don't have any kind of the kind of issues that we uh, eventually have as adults. Things for children are all the same. Children have equal opportunities when they are cared for in a learning environment. When we care for our children, socialization and skills are developed like knowing how to eat properly, knowing how to say thank you, knowing how to say excuse me, knowing how to obey the rules and regulations. Some of you know it, that in most instances, in most instances, the prison system and the quantity of beds are usually determined by what happens in the third and the fourth grade. That's why socialization skill set are important when we care for our children. Children, believe it or not, are responsible for the economic growth of our society and for our community. Imagine what we spend on children. And you do know that what you spend on children means you're providing a job for someone. Some of you, some of us love fast food. And because the fast food industry is aware of that, then they have kids meals. And sometimes when things are good, they have little gifts that they put in the bags for the kids, for the children. And so for that reason, sometimes children want to go to a particular place to get their meal because they know at that particular place, they will be able to get a toy. Now that toy is manufactured by a company. That company employs workers. Those workers come from a home, a place. With their salaries, they're able to care for their families. They're able to give and provide for their community, all from the children. So when we care for our children, there's an economic impact. When we care for our children, it also provides well-being for parents. Parents are satisfied when their children are cared for, whether in their presence, in a daycare, in the school, when they go for field trips, 
We want to know our children are cared for. Yes, children cause us to build communities. Today, uh, we have mothers against drunk driving, a very powerful organization. There's so many other organizations that have been formed because of the need to care for our children. And so caring for children, protecting our children are also essential for building community. Then our future workforce, where do you think the doctors are gonna come from? Where do you think the nurses are gonna come from? Where do you think the teachers are gonna come from? Where do you think that the preachers, the bishops, the presidents, the executives, the, the senators and the doctors, where do you think they will come from? There's no ship coming from Mars or coming from Pluto or some planet every year bringing down children to, to serve humanity. No, they come through the womb. And when those children come, if we do not do well by protecting them, the future of our communities, the future of our nations, the future of our homes are going to be in serious perilous problems. Believe it or not, there is a shortage of teachers right here in America. There is a shortage of doctors right here in America. There's a shortage of nurses right here in America. There's a shortage in all sectors. Why? Because somewhere we were not conscientious about protecting the workforce for the future. When we care for our children, Susan says, everyone benefits. When we care for our children, when all of us are working together to care for our children, we all benefit. If your child is in trouble, it doesn't benefit us. No one is benefited when a child is not experiencing the best of life. And so caring for our children is extremely, extremely important. Protecting our children is extremely important. Prayerfully on Monday or Tuesday, we are putting together a little video to show you what can happen when children are protected when children are cared for, when children are observed. You know, in the educational system, there is what is referred to as the Montessori system. And the Montessori system, really what it is basically, it almost mimics what the scripture says. The scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, when she is old, she will not depart away from it. Now, there are two ways to look at that. There is the ideal, cultural, what not, what not way the child should go. Being respectful, etc. But then there is the divine way that a child should go. And uh, I want for Sister Lottie to just share with us briefly about the child who uh, at a very early age had graduated with many, many degrees. Miss Lottie, can you do that for us, please? Mrs. Lottie? Yes. Yes, Bishop. <laughs> Let me say good afternoon to my brothers and sisters. Uh, in terms of a child, this particular child 
name is I lost my notes. Clovis Hong. Uh he is twelve years old. Ten or twelve, I'm trying to remember. And he graduated with five college degrees and applied science and math and computer computer science and two others that he was blessed to graduate with five degrees. Yes, but you also said that uh, the mother Observing, yes, the mother observing him noticed his precociousness for learning. Yes, and because of that, she continued to, to elevate and to promote him. I want you to say that too. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, he was about two, and he was always into something, a lot. He was trying to learn something, wanted to learn something. And so she noticed that, so she kept putting things before him. And by the time he was three, he kept on. And she said, something that's interesting about this child. So she kept tracking him, and he finally sent him to school. But at school, you could never get him to sort of sit still. He always wanted more, wanted more. So she began to bring books out and start doing books with him. And he started reading them, comprehending them. And that wasn't enough. He was just going through them. So eventually she took him out of school because school could not uh, handle him per se because of what he was doing. And she began to homeschool him. And everything she would give him, he would go through it. So she began to, uh, you know, as a little toddler, a little four or five-year-old, six-year-old started giving him uh, different college. She gave him a college uh, test or book or something. And he went through that and passed it. She said something is not happening correctly. You know, if he went through that. So she applied and she showed the school, the system or whatever she had to go through. This is what was happening. So they gave him another uh, particular college course. And he kept on, kept on going through all of them. So at the time he was about six years old, seven, he was taking all college courses and the other day last year, 2023, I believe I'm correct, or before then, 2023, he was able to graduate with uh, five different degrees. So when he graduated, he stood up and of course the whole place stood up for him and clapped and clapped and clapped. They were just amazed because when he was about, what, eight eight or ten, he had managed to graduate his peers who was in their 20s and 30s. And that's what he was doing. Mm. Wow. So we see that when you take the time to observe your child, you are able to pick up on some things that ordinarily you will not pick up on because you are too busy. Some of you remember when uh, Dr. Charles Gross was with us during the Black History Month program. He is a psychologist, a counselor, he's a coach and all of that. He talked about the importance of us spending time with our children. Because it is only when we are intentional, not casual, not happenstance, it, you know, it happened, but when we are intentional on a regular basis to listen, to observe, and to see what our children are doing. Believe it or not, all of us are blessed to have God's best. 
But what happens when we do not take the time to in fact invest in them? And investment here has to do with time, attention, fellowship, conversation. When we do not take the time, we miss out on certain valuable expressions of their personality or their identity. Yes. And so protecting our children is extremely, extremely important. Why? Because children come into this world with a purpose. You know, we said earlier, looking at Psalm 127, that children are a heritage of God. And we said that heritage is that which is owned by one person and you pass it on to another person. Children come into this world with a vision. They come into this world with a goal in them. All they need is the opportunity to be placed in the right context to bloom. We hear many times about Albert Einstein, quote unquote, a genius. But if you were in his early upbringing, you would never have associated with him at the end of his life with such creativity, intelligence, and wisdom. No. But somewhere in the process, someone picked up on the fact that this guy is unusual and we need to put him in the right context. Today, I want to just share with you very quickly before we open up for conversation and go to God in prayers. A child by the name of Jeremiah in the Bible. We say children come into this world, they come with a purpose. They come with a particular reason. They come with a vision. God send them here for a reason. And as adults, we need to take the time to look out to see what is it God has sent our children here to do. It is said that in his youth, God saw one who would be true to his trust and who would stand for the right against great, great opposition. God saw that in Jeremiah. Let me read for you Jeremiah chapter 1. It says, beginning at verse 1, These are the words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests from the town of Anatoth in the land of Benjamin. The Lord first gave messages to Jeremiah during uh the 13th year of the reign of Joash, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. The Lord's messages continued throughout the reign of King Jehoiakim, Josiah's son, until the 11th year of the reign of King Zedekiah, another of Josiah's sons. In August of the 11th year, the people of Jerusalem were taken away captives. Now, these are supposed to be God's people. But God's people were taken away captive. They were taken from their homes. They were taken from their communities. They were taken away from their culture. They were taken away from their familiar grounds. They were taken away from their religion. They were taken away from their music, whatever they knew. They were taken away from it, not 
voluntarily, but involuntarily by force and taken out. They were taken into captivity. And someone would say, wow, why would God let his people go into captivity? Well, that is what happens when we turn our backs on God. That is what happens when we disobey God's commandments. That is what happens when we refuse to honor God's word. Bad things will happen to us. It says here in Jeremiah chapter 4, God's, Jeremiah's call and first visions. It says, the Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Jeremiah's purpose was to be a prophet of God to the nations, to warn them, to call them back to God's words. And guess what? They didn't listen. They did not listen. And that's why you know if a prophet is true or not. You know if a prophet is true or not. If in fact what the prophet teaches, preaches, or prophesies comes to pass. Jeremiah told him, if you all don't turn around and turn to the things of God, you are going to see some devastation in your life. They didn't listen. And look what happened. Just like in this series that we're working on. This series has been in my spirit a long, long time. And God is here finally allowing me to share this with you that the place we need to begin to focus on is the home. Because that is where the devil has decided to build his empire in the home. And when the home is not dominated by the spirit of God, when the home is not dominated by the word of God, when the home is not focused on the things of God, the home can become a dangerous ground for dangerous activities. The home. And because the devil knows that we are so busy with our jobs, with our careers, and with our this and with our that, while we are out trying to quote unquote secure a future. What good is securing a future if you have no one to pass it on to? What good is it to do all you can to amass all of this world's goods and possessions when you have no one to pass it on to because they are here, they are there, they're strung out on drugs, in prison, in jail. I mean, do you see the point? And so protecting our children is extremely important. On Monday, we'll continue to look at Jeremiah, to see how God saw something in him and ensured that his vision, his purpose for living was in fact executed. Now, I need you to understand that sometimes even when you are out for God, standing up for God, you will have your own share of the problems. 
because Jeremiah did not stay home. He too was carried away into captivity. But if the people had listened to him, it would have been a different world. And so I say to you, our children, our heritage of God, the lit Nelson Mandela said, children are very precious, but yet most vulnerable. The lit Kofi Annan, who was Secretary General of the United Nations, said children need a place to grow up in peace. And I will say to you, if we want a beautiful future, it must be because of what we have done and are doing with our children. Yes, children must be protected. And as we have noted, it cannot be done by just one person. It takes a village to raise a child. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.